A portion of this video is sponsored by Discovery Plus. It's September of 2020. Donald Trump is still the 45th president and tweeting a lot. We are six months into a global pandemic. A lot of people are still struggling, but not everyone. In September of 2020, Lordstown Motors, an electric truck startup company based out of Ohio, had a peak market value of $6 billion. As of March 2022, Lordstown Motors market value is now worth $412 million. So how in the hell do you lose $5.5 billion in this quick of a time span? And who exactly is behind Lordstown? And what does GM have to do with them? Today on Wheelhouse, let's talk about the ill-fated Lordstown Motors EV startup and how it all came crashing down in just 700 days. A huge thanks to Discovery Plus for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Check out Million Dollar Wheels exclusively on Discovery Plus. Wheels. 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 They make the car world go round. It's that simple. But in the high stakes world of high end car deals. Wheels. 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 Can get a little complicated. From Discovery Plus and executive producer Jamie Foxx. Oh. Really? Million Dollar Wheels gives you the exclusive behind the scenes look into the lives of highly competitive luxury car dealers who specialize in making their clients' wildest dreams come true. You wanna talk about pressure? If you can't deliver, you're done. Nice. Clients like Travis Barker. You might've heard of him. Tom Holland. He's Spider-Man. And Kim Kardashian. And more. You'll follow high-end car dealers like R.D. Whittington as he works his magic on cars like Ferraris, Rolls Royces, Bugattis, and more. I sell more Bugattis than Bugattis. What? Stream all episodes of Million Dollar Wheels now, only on Discovery Plus. Oh. Downloading and subscribing to Discovery Plus is so freaking easy. Plus, they have a seven day free trial. Ooh. So what are you waiting for? Check out Million Dollar Wheels and who knows, maybe one day me and the guys will be on it. Thanks to Discovery Plus for sponsoring that portion of this video. Let's start from the top. Our first act of this story starts in a little town called Lordstown, Ohio. Located in Mahoning Valley, Lordstown sits just an hour away from Cleveland and Pittsburgh, with a current population of about 3,200 people. Despite its small size, the Lordstown assembly plant was operated by General Motors from 1966 to 2019. The Lordstown assembly plant manufactured many GM cars over the years, but one of the more recent popular models to come out of this factory was the Chevy Cruze. GM made the Chevy Cruze in Lordstown for about eight years, from 2011 to 2019. Chevy Cruze, not to be confused with Penelope Cruze, first made it to the US market in 2010 to replace the discontinued Cobalt. The Cruze is marketed as a solid, compact, four-door passenger sedan, and for five years straight, the Cruze sold 200,000 plus units per year. This was great. But like most good things, the reign of the cruise had to come to an end, and the money it was making for GM plummeted. GM discontinued the cruise in 2019, claiming they wanted to focus exclusively on the Malibu and spend more time building electric vehicles such as the Bolt EV. This end of an era did not pan out well for the Lordstown complex, as this meant GM had to close the plant. This was not only gonna be damaging for the employees of the factory, but the economy for the surrounding area. But not to worry, because Lordstown, Ohio had a savior on the horizon and his name was Steve. Stephen P. Burns, AKA Steve Burns, was the CEO of Workhorse and eventually Lordstown Motors, but more on him a little later. Workhorse, formerly known as AMP Electric Vehicles, needed a place to manufacture the W15 EV pickup truck. In 2017, the W15 was teased as a concept. It was a range extended electric pickup truck. The Workhorse W15 was set to sell for $52,000 and have a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, promising a range of 320 miles. In 2018, Steve Burns founded Lordstown Motors, and in early 2020, Workhorse confirmed they had transferred the W15 in a licensing agreement. The W15 was now the Lordstown Motors Endurance. Meanwhile, with the discontinuation of the Chevy Cruze at the Lordstown assembly plant, GM needs to keep this factory open to save face and essentially make themselves look good. So the GM plant in Lordstown, Ohio becomes the Lordstown Motors plant in 2019. In this transaction, GM gives Lordstown Motors $75 million total and then received 7.5 million shares in the startup. It's stated that as part of the initial public offering process, GM contributed $25 million in cash and 50 million in kind. This $50 million figure was attributed to the handover of the plant 
its equipment, and GM's help with operational costs. $75 million to the typical human is a lot of money, and 7.5 million shares in the stock of a company sounds like a lot to the average Joe. But this was technically less than 5% of company ownership. This help GM extended to Lordstown Motors was hardly any skin off their own back, and GM received great press for investing in a startup rather than just letting the plant die. Plus, this avoidance of a shutdown was keeping the economy in Mahoning Valley going. All in all, this was a great transaction for Lordstown Motors because they basically got this plant for free. Let's quickly jump forward to late 2021. GM turned around and sold all their shares in Lordstown Motors when the stock took its final fatal plummet. GM did this quietly, despite the small loss they took from selling all their shares. Jim Kane, the executive director of finance, sales, and corporate development communications at GM stated, quote, we invested in Lordstown Motors to help them complete the purchase of our former assembly plant and return it to vehicle production. We sold our small stake in the company in the fourth quarter of 2020. And then, basically nothing else was mentioned to the media. A complete mic drop moment. So back to the question of why. Why did GM do this? And why did Lordstown Motors stock plummet? Well, remember Steve Burns? Old Stevie? Stevie CEO? Well, let's look into this guy. Steve Burns, not the actor, was the original CEO and founder of Lordstown Motors. Before he landed at Lordstown, he had a rather lengthy history of founding and co-founding startup tech companies and marketing companies and then turning them around and selling them. The first company of this kind he founded was called Over the Link slash AdLink, and he sold it to Gamut Co. in 1994. He later founded PocketScript and sold it to Zix Corp. in 2002. And then in 2007, he co-founded Amp Electric Vehicles. AMP was a developmental stage vehicle electrification company, meaning they made cars electric that weren't previously electric. They first experimented with adding battery electric power to two-seat roadsters. Over the next eight years, AMP would go on to produce the 100% electric AMP Sky, which took the popular Saturn Sky and turned it into an all-electric model. AMP electric vehicles had a promising run, but in the March of 2015, AMP changed its name to Workhorse Group. Steve Burns then became CEO of Workhorse. It was a company specializing in making electric delivery trucks. It was during this time at Workhorse that the previously mentioned W15 was created as a prototype for Burns' vision of an all-electric pickup. In 2019, Steve Burns stepped down as CEO at Workhorse and into the CEO position at Lordstown Motors as the W15 model from Workhorse quickly became the Endurance. GM hands over the 785-acre, 6.2 million square foot Lordstown assembly plant where Lordstown Motors plans to build the Lordstown Endurance. The Endurance was believed to be the world's first full-size all-electric pickup truck designed to serve the commercial fleet market. And this would transform the Mahoning Valley into the epicenter of electric vehicle manufacturing manufacturing, according to the vision of good old Steve. We'll dive into the details of the endurance a little later. First, we need to talk about SPAC mergers, okay? Steve has his new company and his new manufacturing plant, and about a year in, Lordstown Motors merges with an SPAC in 2020. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, and they are defined as a company whose main purpose is to raise money from other investors with the intention of merging with an existing company or startup. They are a lot of times referred to as blank check companies, okay? The public SPAC deal was huge, and overnight, Lordstown Motors became publicly traded stock, which meant money. Lordstown Motors' value soared to $4 billion. They saw even more growth in their stock when Steve announced that they secured over 100,000 pre-orders for the Endurance in early 2021. This was a huge deal for a new startup. 100,000 pre-orders, imagine that, that's incredible. In early 2020, Lordstown Motors released a series of YouTube videos with the intent to create traction around the new Endurance EV prototype and give a behind the scenes look into the new and improved Lordstown assembly plant under the eyes of the startup. All these videos were narrated by none other than Steve Burns. In the main video that was released, Steve says, quote, The mission of Lordstown Motors is to empower the working spirit. Everything we do is with the worker in mind, both our worker that's making the truck and the worker that's going to drive that truck. The video then teased that the truck would arrive in 2020, with speculation of running prototypes in April and production to follow in November of that year. I mean, a lot of us had high aspirations for the year of 2020 in February, but damn, dude. 
Regardless of what we all know now what was to happen in 2020, this was an extremely ambitious timeline nonetheless. Considering that the acquisition of the factory was in late 2019, they needed to retool the entire 6.2 million square foot facility. That's a lot of retooling. Also, Lordstown Motors was not only promising to have the first all-electric truck for the commercial fleet market, they were attempting to bring to market the first passenger vehicle with in-wheel hub motors, which was an untested technology in pickup trucks. For those that don't know, in-wheel hub motors put a motor on each wheel. Its overall goal is to have less wasted motion as all the energy goes directly into the wheels. It's pretty complicated. Lordstown Motors did not deliver the timeline promises it made in 2020, but they remained optimistic. On January 11th, 2021, they put out a press release to the public saying, Lordstown Motors surpasses 100,000 pre-orders for the Lordstown Endurance. Around the same time, Steve Burns was on record to many media outlets touting this fact, as well as all the progress that was being made on the Endurance. Things were looking up. As all this positive news was coming out about Lordstown and the Endurance, we didn't know about a little incident that happened in January of 2021, one night in Michigan. A working prototype for the Endurance caught on fire while being test driven by Lordstown Motors employees. There are some pretty uh, gruesome photos of the aftermath of the fire, and I have to say those Lordstown employees are lucky to have survived this accident. It was clear the prototype was not ready for human drivers. The company stated the accident was due to human error while putting the vehicle together, and now that process has been automated, which should fix the issue. That's comforting. Information detailing the crash and other rumors was not released to the public until March 12, 2021, in statements from a Hindenburg research report on Lordstown Motors. This is where shit really goes downhill. But what the hell is the Hindenburg Report? What did it mean for Lordstown Motors? The Hindenburg Report broke the news about the endurance prototype catching on fire. As it happens, the fire wasn't even the worst thing going on at Lordstown. Turns out, pretty much everything was a sham. All the juicy pre-order numbers that Burns and Lordstown touted to incite investors, including General Motors, were fake. Burns eventually acknowledged the report, but left no comment. However, a few days after hearing about it, he did quote himself, quoting none other than my girl Tay-Tay. Quote, I quoted Taylor Swift to somebody the other day, haters gonna hate, 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 hate. You gotta shake it off. You know what, Steve? Corny. As the investigation continued, press releases continued to pour out from Lordstown Motors. On May 24th of 2021, Lordstown Motors reported a first quarter net loss of 125 million, CAPEX funds of 53 million, and cash of 587 million. In June, Lordstown announced it received notice of delinquency for late filing, which I assume is bad. And then finally, on June 14th, Lordstown Motors reported the results of the Special Committee investigation of Hindenburg Research Report. The same day this press release surfaced, Steve Burns was finally toast and resigned as CEO of Lordstown Motors. And 2021 continued. Workhorse, Steve's other company, said they now sold most of their stake in Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors suffered major financial hemorrhaging and was unable to produce their EV pickup truck at their own plant. It was time to phone a friend, so they called upon Taiwanese manufacturer Foxconn to step in and buy the factory. On September 30th of last year, it was disclosed that Lordstown Motors entered into an automatic investment plan with Foxconn. As a sign of confidence in the deal, Foxconn purchased $50 million of common stock directly from Lordstown at a price of $6.89 per share. Foxconn is one of the largest manufacturers manufacturers of electronics in the world. Will they be able to help Lordstown actually get a working product out this year? I guess we'll see. This brings us to today. GM has washed their hands of Lordstown, Burns is out, and the new acting CEO of Lordstown Motors is a guy named Daniel Ninivagi. And despite the crash and burn and the company's value, they keep on going. Lordstown Motors recently tweeted from their booth at Work Truck Week in good spirits. In another press release, yes, another one. Lordstown Motors promises, quote, the truck launches production and commercial sales in the third quarter of 2022. Only time will tell if they can finally deliver. So yeah, to sum it up, if you lie about the number of pre-orders on your product, continually make false promises to the public, and generally avoid telling the truth about the state of your company, you too can blow $5.5 billion in 700 days. The end. Last night I had a dream where I was on this ranch there are horses everywhere. Not just regular horses. Big, beautiful, sturdy buff horses. That place is called Buff Horse Ranch. Now, unfortunately, that was just a dream. 
these shirts we made are 100% real and 100% cotton. Available now at donutmedia.com. Thank you very much for watching Wheelhouse this week. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you'd like. It really helps us out. Follow Donut on all social media at Donut Media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes if you'd like. Be kind. I'll see you next time.